The French Revolution took a long time to end and influenced so many things, people and countries. But even 220 years after it ended, its reputation is unclear. The key question a lot of historians have gotten hooked on is this. Was the terror inevitable? Let's go right to the start. The year is 1774 and France has a new king and queen, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. France has fought a lot of wars over the last hundred years and they're about to get involved in another one. Not sure if you know this, but wars ain't cheap. So they need money from taxes, but the aristocracy doesn't pay taxes, nor the church really. The people are already paying as much as they can. In the 1780s, they hire a man called Necker as finance minister to try and sort things out, but they sack him. Later, when they're really desperate, he comes back. See this? It's called the Estates General, which was kind of like a parliament, but it hadn't happened for over a hundred years. The first thing Necker did was to announce it would happen the next year, in 1789. Surprisingly, the people are going to get some kind of representation, even if they can be outvoted by the clergy and nobility. But before it happens, France misses debt payment. They go bankrupt. The Estates General meets at Versailles, where the royal family live. See this group of people? They're the members of the Estates General debating many, many things, mostly about how they should run themselves and vote. But one day, they find they've been locked out of the room they were in. They go to another room, an indoor tennis court. They make an oath to each other to not stop meeting until they have a set of rules about how the country can be run. A constitution, if you will. It's the tennis court oath and the start of the revolution. So Necker is feeling pretty pleased with himself for making all this happen. And then the king sacks him for not being loyal enough. The thing is, he's popular. In fact, incredibly popular. Everyone thought he could turn France around. News of the firing makes its way from Versailles to Paris. Some people whip up the crowd. They raid this place. It's a prison. It's the Bastille. Turns out there are only seven people in there, but they tear it down anyway. Royal authority starts to crumble. The Estates General becomes the National Assembly. They start passing all kinds of reforms. The king says, fuck no, to a lot of them. Around this time, these women with pitchforks were seen marching in the countryside. They were heading to Versailles. When they arrive, they invade the palace and threaten Louis and Marie. They demand they come with them back to Paris. They have no choice. They go with the women, who are ecstatic that they've rescued the king from bad influence. This is a kind of flashpoint in the revolution. It showed that the king was vulnerable to the people. Things have been moving pretty quickly, but they speed up. Feeling trapped and sensing that maybe things won't go well for them, the royal family cosplay as middle-class people and decide to make a break for it. They ride away in the night in a carriage. They're getting closer and closer to the border. It might just happen, but then they're spotted. A chase ensues. Can they make it out of France? No. They're caught and taken back to Paris. Maybe, people think, this guy is not with us after all. But they let him stay as king, just with less power. Still enough power for this though. Louis comes up with a clever plan to free himself. He declares war on Austria, who just so happens to be where Marie Antoinette is from. He hopes that either the army sides with him or that they're beaten by the Austrians with a win. This group are ordinary people who are becoming very politically active. They force the politicians to set a maximum price the bread can be. Then they raid the palace the royal family live in. They're the sans culottes. The people aren't so passive and helpless now. Then the royal family is abolished. They're just normal people now. Normal people who have done some questionable things in the eyes of the Sanculot. This is a very important event in the revolution. So far, the war of Austria isn't going too well. And one night in September 1792, some prisoners who are seen as enemies of the revolution are woken up. Many of them are murdered, at least 1,000 of them over the next few days. The hope is getting rid of the people holding the revolution back will help France do better. Did the perpetrators go to trial? Nope, but Louis does for high treason. He was always bound to be guilty. That was never in doubt with the sans waiting in the wings. What was in doubt was what the sentence would be. The decision by a single vote was death. They executed him the next day. Meanwhile, outside of France, we know they are at war with Austria. Since then, Prussia has joined in too. But now Louis was dead, everyone kicked off. Britain and the Netherlands joined them. France and the revolution had a lot of enemies. With the threats of the revolution from the war, people in France become even more paranoid, especially the Saint-Culotte. Over in a region called the Vendée, there's a full-on armed rebellion against the revolution. So France has enemies, internal and external. Things escalate fast. The Committee of Public Safety is formed. They're there to keep everyone safe. Simple, but they start to get influenced by the Saint-Culotte, who are demanding that everyone needs to be kept in check. And so the terror begins. At first, a few people are executed, then a lot. Then the revolutionaries turn on themselves. This guy ends up in charge, and he's loving life. Robespierre the Incorruptible, they call him. But when so many people are being executed, enemies are inevitable. He is shot, they arrest him. He tries to shoot himself. He partially succeeds. He is executed by the guillotine, and the terror is over. Just like that. 
people kind of want to chill after all that, but the revolution isn't over. They change the constitution a few more times. The saint culot rise up and they're put back down. Some royalists rise up and Napoleon puts them down by firing cannons at them. And now France is doing well in the wars with the help of this Napoleon guy. Someone sees a way to end all the uncertainty. They launch a coup where Napoleon would be the leader. It works. He finishes off the wars a few years later. That's it, the end of the French Revolution. But back to the terror and its effects on the reputation of the revolution. The people who study the history of the revolution can be split into two very rough camps. It was the best of times or it was the worst of times. A lot of it hinges on their opinion of the terror. Some say the terror was inevitable and so the revolution was bad. Others say yes, the terror was bad, but look what else happened. And no, it wasn't inevitable. My opinion of the terror? It was a terrible series of events, but it wasn't inevitable, so I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I loved the French Revolution and the ways it showed how we could change everything if enough people wanted it to happen. But what do you think? If you enjoyed this, you might just like this one too.